Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is JN Interactive. Within today's big story, and today is World Malaria Day. We are commemorating it uh, around the world. It's been set by the United Nations. And so all of us, wherever you are, you would know today's World Malaria Day. Before we start to go into the meat of everything we're doing today, I'd like to announce all the social media tools that you need to get in touch with the show. We are on Facebook, facebook.com slash news on TV. That's where you find us. Like our page. We have posted stuff there. Comment on them. We would amplify it as always and share it with the rest of the world. We are on Twitter. The main page will be at Joy News on TV. And you can also tweet at us, JN Interactive GH. I am on Twitter too and I will gladly retweet all your tweets. You will find me at MN Toure. If you're sending us an email, please send it to joynewsim at multitvworld.com and our WhatsApp number is 054-010-9009. And JN Interactive, as always, is where tech meets news to set the agenda. So April 25th, that is today, is commemorated each year as World Malaria Day, a day set aside to recognize global efforts to control malaria. According to the World Health Organization, the global efforts to eliminate malaria have saved an estimated 3.3 million lives since 2000. This translates to a 49% reduction in malaria mortality rate in Africa and 42% globally. But in spite of all these gains, malaria still kills an estimated 627,000 people annually, mainly children below the age of five in sub-Saharan Africa. The minimum, um, no, millennium, sorry, millennium development goals are four or five, which actually seek to reduce infant uh, mortality and then maternal mortality also can best be met if we all come together to win the fight against malaria, which itself as part of all the MDG goals, also uh, encapsulated in goal number six. But Ghana and other African countries are still struggling. We are struggling to, you know, realize this goal. Dr. Constance uh, Bat Plunge is actually a programs manager of the National Malaria uh, Control Program, and she actually explains some of the things that are hindering, uh, hampering the progress of finding a solution, you know, an amicable solution to the malaria problem. Let's listen to our first video blog when we come back. We will do some more analysis. As you can see, we still have malaria. Even though in Greater Accra, prevalence is about 4%. If you go to Upper West, it's 51%. Until we are able to say that malaria is truly eliminated from the country, we have to continue to invest. And therefore, in investing, we are talking about putting in money, making sure you build capacity so that you have the correct people to manage, also making sure that the people themselves, Ghanaians themselves, are adequately informed, okay, so that they handle and prevent themselves from getting malaria. The major challenge is with our own people and their attitude. It's not every fever which is malaria. I mean, I have been singing this song for so many years now, I don't know what to say. Fever represents something of many diseases. And therefore, when you feel you have fever, get tested to be sure that you have malaria parasites before you take the medicine. So the challenge is this over-treatment with malaria. I'm supposed to hang the nets up and sleep under them. But we have heard that some people are not sleeping under them. And people are, some people are cutting it and using it for other things. I've been using it for their backyard gardens. I don't know why they will use the nets for their backyard garden. Maybe to protect their plants from the goods. But I think it's a wrong use of it. Others are using it for, I, I hear they are using it for dress senses. But there are cheaper laces around. So I think that as a, as a country, we should use for the nets have been brought here for us to use it for because they are treated with uh, insecticide to kill mosquitoes for us to protect ourselves from malaria so we really have to use the net the way somebody said they are even using it for wedding gown bills but i don't think that is the right thing to do Malaria, malaria, it's a, it's a worrying issue, but to think that someone would use a malaria uh, insecticide-treated net for a wedding veil, it actually beats my mind. I don't know 
whether they're trying to prevent mosquitoes from biting them on their wedding day whilst in the church or, or what it is it, it just goes to buttress the point that we need more education 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 and more education and that is where we the media also come in and i know that we're doing our utmost and so wherever you are try and also educate your community about this dangerous disease i was trying to compare it to uh, hiv aids when i was speaking to steve ainty but you see malaria has become so widespread it's become an epidemic that it's more than AIDS. The, the situation is worrying more than even HIV AIDS. But the picture, however, is not all that gloomy because a small community in the Bibiani district of the Western region is making some really positive strides. Two years ago, the community was adjudged the second best in a long-lasting insecticide net hanging competition organized by the Regional Health Service. Let's take that in our second video blog. <laughs> Malaria is said to be the number one cause of death in the Bibiani district. The disease is also the single most important cause of morbidity. A 2013 performance review in the district suggests malaria accounts for 34% of all outpatient department cases and 44% of hospital adjuncts. Malaria takes the report to the IFRA Tribunal was 3.9%. The district malaria focal person, Isaac Crunchy, encouraged residents to keep their surroundings tidy and gutters clear so they do not become breeding grounds for mosquitoes. Isaac Crunchy also sought to discourage the practice of exchanging free treated mosquito nets for clothes and footwear among expectant mothers. <laughs> Welcome back. So, well, it's not all that gloomy after all, but I know that a lot more needs to be done, and I know you know that already. We have uh, some comments that have been dropping on social media. We'll take that. But, you see, Sarah has been out there like she always does, and she's been asking you because um, some of you, or we all understand that uh, some of the mosquito repellents that are out there, mosquito treated nets, and especially the coils, apparently they're not working. So uh, we wanted to find out what you think about them and also suggest ways uh, on the way forward dealing with this malaria issue. I'll take some comments and when we come back, we would uh, zip to Sarah to give us those comments that she, uh, she gathered from you on the street. So the precursor is already set. Uh, we're telling you, if you didn't know it already, today is World Malaria Day is commemorated all around the world and we are asking how do we win the fight against malaria so many of your comments have come through sharing what you think we can do pragmatic steps and Majida how do first comment from Gushegu uh, MT and I think uh, that's Marion Ture I think that is a, a good achievement by the world leaders however more interventions can be done to ease uh, the killer erase the killer canker in our societies the unstable governance in the uh, various countries around the world is the major cause of this problem because policies are always changing uh, when there is a change in leadership. Okay, that's what you are thinking, but how do we solve it? I'm looking for practical ways of solving this. So if you're yet to drop your comments, please bear that in mind and give me something practical that you think we can adopt to, you know, stop this. Uh, why, says, uh, we need a potent vaccine, but whilst we wait on this uh, messiah called, <laughs> called vaccine, I think mass education or on its prevention measures would be appropriate. That's your opinion. And yes, of course, uh, we're being educated, but um, uh, things are not still going well because people are still dying from malaria. Abraham Solomon New says, I think Ghana Health Service is doing well in fighting malaria. Uh, Edmund says, for me, a lot of public education has been done and it's time for action to be taken to fight malaria. What kind of action are you talking about, Edmund? If you could please send what action that you think 
we can use to fight this. Kennedy Asari Bequin, we should all help to clean our areas and public education about malaria awareness should be organized, but uh, we nurses are doing our best by giving mosquito nets to pregnant women and children at 18 months after giving uh, measles vaccination. Okay, the government is also doing its bit. Jeffrey Jefferson Crano, we need to keep our communities clean and that is very practical because all of these, you know, um, breathing mosquitoes and bits and pieces like that. So if we're able to clean our communities, then we will be able to do this. Some more comments. Abuga Ab uh, Abel says, uh, there should be an annual education on malaria and also supplying nets to people, which is being done already. They are getting nets uh, supplied to them. Benjamin says, major cause of malaria to me is poor sanitation. Let's work towards um, improving our fragile sanitation in our country. Our haphazard way of littering in gutters must be a thing of the past. God save Ghana from uh, <laughs> Organa Sunyani. Okay, that's your nickname. Abdullahi Abdul Razak says, um, it's all about how we sometimes keep our environment because a clean environment will help reduce this canker. But what do we see in our so-called... Um, Big cities, so alarming. Oh, wow. Yes, I know. And um, if you've been watching Clean Communities lately, usually it comes w after um, JN Interactive and today's big story. My colleague, uh, Blandi Souza, had been going around town. Some of the communities are filthy. And to even say filthy, I think that uh, I'm using really, really good words there. It would be an understatement to say they're filthy. It's a pig stack. To think that someone will be driving out of their car, eat um, plantain chips, decide to throw the rubber out, drink sobolo, decide to throw it out. I'm sure you can keep it in your car and take it home. Come on, we can all do our little bit to help our nation. The filth is too much. And dare I see, sometimes Accra stinks. You're driving in the morning and you can't even take it anymore. Where is the fresh air for us? I'll pause here and then take our next video blog. Sarah has been out there to ascertain what you're thinking about what you're using the mosquito coil the nets are they working for you we'll take um our next one and then uh as in helping you protect yourself how do you think you can protect yourself in uh, all this can i call it malaria epidemic <laughs> we'll take our video blog <laughs> Thank you, Marion. Today is World Malaria Day, and usually, to prevent malaria, people will kill mosquitoes and also prevent mosquito bites. But how easy is it to prevent mosquitoes from biting you? We need to uh, keep our environment clean, yes, uh, by clearing our gutters. You see, when there are deaths in the gutter, they breed mosquitoes. Uh, so when we try to keep our environment clean, they spray all the environment so that uh, mosquitoes will not, it's, uh, the gutters will not breed mosquitoes here. Yeah. We should get rid of stagnant waters in the gutters, like every week, when there is a gutter in front of your house, we have to clear it every week to make sure that there is no dirty water in it. And then we also have to clear our bushy areas and surroundings, we should make sure our surroundings are always clean to prevent the mosquito bites. When you enter into the community itself, you may find out some gutters which are not all that clean. And when it happens like that, then before you realize, then it brings out uh, the mosquitoes. Yeah, we, like, like I was saying before, we seem to know what to do. We're just not doing it. So do we need to be whipped into action or what? You know, you're a student. You know you ought to learn to pass your exams. And you're not learning. If you fail, who do you blame? So now we know that we have to keep our communities clean, keep our gutters clean, sanitize wherever we live. Meanwhile, we are not doing it. So who do we want to come and do this for us? Is this government wahala also? Do we have to call President Muhammad to come and do this? Because everything that's happening in this country, we're blaming government. Government this, government that, government this, government yada, yada, yada. So what are you doing? Everybody says, oh, keep our cl communities clean. And you'll be surprised, the same people who are drumming keep our communities clean, are the same people who buy the chewing gum and throw the wrapper on the, on the floor, buy um, sachet water and then throw it over the, on the floor. I think that uh, perhaps we have to go back to the days of the town council, which we used to call tank castle. I think that's what they used to call it. That every neighborhood had a councilman 
who is a sanitary inspector, who will come around and then come and inspect in the morning. I think we need sanitary inspectors. So bring it back. Um, the DCEs, what are you doing in your communities? Bring it back to the basic level so that we can solve this from community to community to towns. Then it becomes a whole national thing. But if you're sitting for the nation to do it, I'm sorry, it just won't happen. And it's very frustrating. Yes, if you can hear it, I am frustrated this evening that um, Ghana is so filthy. And uh, you will go to some countries, neighboring countries. Um, Morocco is in Africa, Tunisia is in Africa, Kenya is in Africa, Botswana is in Africa. If you go to all of these places, they are all Africans. They have black skin just like you and I. But their communities are much, much better. Perhaps it's uh, a home thing. They are thought from home. So we should start from home. Charity, after all, they say, uh, begins at home. Let's go and take our final video blog. And in that one, Sarah has been asking you, to proffer some solutions if you're thinking it is just uh, cleaning our communities and also what you're thinking about the insecticide and all the others and how they're helping you combat malaria. We'll take our final video blog and when we come back, I'll take some more comments before we wrap up your show for the week. Now, some people have said that although the mosquito nets are helping to prevent mosquito bites, the coils, however, have negative effects. They have said that they're bad for our health, and also the mosquitoes are becoming immune to those products. Now, what are some alternative products that we can use in order to help prevent mosquitoes from biting us? At the time I used to use mosquito coil, I would say the best form of it was uh, the reed. Reed mosquito coil was working perfectly for me. But when I switched back to using the, the net, Except a net which has not been treated, and I've always been using those that are treated. So to me, in person, the net is working for me. I use the mosquito net, but the, I'm not. I don't usually use the mosquito coil. It's very very effective for using the mosquito net. As you are inhaling the smoke, see there are free radicals. And the free radicals are very, very dangerous for the system. See, when you have free radicals in your system, meaning you can get prone to so many sicknesses. And that is toxicity. Do you get it? Yeah, but when you use the net, you are safe. Because you are under the net, your, no part of your body is being exposed so that the mosquito can bite you. So when you are under the net, you are safe. Other than using the coil and that you'll be inhaling those radical, free radicals, it's, 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 it's not the best. Ah, so the gentleman is talking about free radicals. <laughs> We're getting a science uh, lesson here. Uh, fantastic. So um, he is thinking that uh, the mosquito nets are much, much better than uh, using, um, you know, insecticide or... Uh, a coil or something like that but um, I think I prefer the spray um, mostly when I'm heading out of the house for work I spray the room by the time you come back uh, the smell is gone and the mosquitoes have died if they were even supposed to be there in the first place we'll take some more comments that have been dropping in and uh, this one Jonathan Arthur says governments must set a day aside for we Ghanaians to do a clean-up exercise in commemoration of the day. Okay, that's what you're thinking. But if government hasn't set it up yet, I'm sure you can do something in your community to, to help. Your own communities can take perhaps uh, one Sunday fortnightly to clean up. So you do that twice every month, okay? I'm sure we can, we can do something. Perhaps JN Interactive can start something. Let's do our own thing. Bring ideas and let's see what we can do together. Suguru says, advocacy is key. Majority of people in sub-Saharan Africa are still ignorant about what malaria really is. We will have a long way to go if we want uh, to achieve a malaria-free sub-Saharan Africa. Kwejo Kojo says, uh, you're beautiful, Mariam. Oh. Thank you very much. We're talking about mosquitoes today. Uh, Mohammed says we must live in a very clean environment and continue uh, the use of treated mosquito nets. Lloyd Bismarck, every, um, every day, world something day. Abba. <laughs> you're so funny. What does that mean of every day, world something day? If you're not doing something about it and, uh, the <laughs> and you know, World Health Organization has decided to put a day aside, you should just... Uh, 
enjoy it and stop telling me every day well the health is <laughs> something al hassan says behavior change is the best and i like this one however in most of the districts in my region that is northern region we don't even know uh, it falls today so you would have actually needed a lot more education so perhaps um a week or two weeks prior to the day we should try and educate you uh, about it uh, mohammed abdulaziz the malaria spraying has helped the people of Upper East a lot after the spraying. It took uh, more than three months, you know, okay, without anyone being bitten by mosquitoes. These mosquitoes um, spay a room. This should continue, plus the people themselves living in a good environment. So we all understand that we have to keep our communities clean. Stephen is back, so we can wrap up for the week.